Hello guys and welcome. I'm Aurelian, co-organizing the continuous testing meetup event with um, Severin. Well, welcome all. So um, today uh, we first would like to thank you our uh, sponsors, which are Source Labs to Amusement and Trending um, for the event. We remind, we remember everybody that uh, our website is continuoustestingmeetup.com. And uh, if you are interested is in uh, participating as a speaker, we are reach, reach us, uh, reach out, just reach out, please, uh, in the chat or uh, on our uh, Slack workspace. Uh, I will send afterwards the, the, the link. So today, I am very glad to introduce you with Philip, uh, which uh, will uh, let us know more about testing API with Cypress. Philip, it's up to you. Hey, thanks for the introduction. Uh, thanks for having me on the, on this event. Hi to everyone, to all of the locations uh, you are joining from. Uh, it's really nice that we can uh, join together from all around the world. So uh, let me now uh, share my screen because I do have, I want to make this very code uh, uh, full. <laughs> I, have some, I have some code prepared for you. Uh, I want to show you how to test uh, uh, your APIs with, uh, with Cypress and different ways of, uh, about um, different ways of how you can go uh, about that. Uh, so you probably know Cypress is a is an end-to-end -end testing tool. Maybe you know it also as a component testing tool, uh, which has come up recently. Well, not so recently, it's almost been a year since uh, since uh, component testing came uh, officially with, uh, with Cypress. Uh, but what I want to show you today is that Cypress can also be a very good API testing tool. Um, sorry, I have my notifications on. I'll try to uh, try to turn them off now so they don't disturb me and you and, and you don't read my emails actually. Uh, and uh, yeah, what was I talking about? Yes, Cypress is actually a very good tool for testing APIs. Uh, and I would like to show you that today. So here I have a repository that uh, you can actually check out on my uh, on my GitHub. Uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, repository called testing API. It, I made some changes right before we started, so it should be at the top. And if you want to follow along or if you are interested in the code, uh, feel free to feel free to take a look. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you are not able to find it, I'll make sure to to um, uh, to share the link with you in, in the end. Uh, also, if you have any questions at any point, uh, feel free to use the chat to to ask the question. Uh, we will be if you if you ask like a timely question, I'll I'll try to make sure to answer it um, uh, immediately. Sev will make sure uh, of that, and if you, if not, then we'll definitely do a round of uh, Q and A at the end. So uh, so I'll be I'll be happy to discuss with you, uh, answer your questions. All right, so let's let's get to, uh, get to it. So in this repository, I have a couple of examples of what we will be doing, and I have uh, also a functioning application that uh, I'm testing. So I have this terminals uh, opened in here. Let me just hide the zoom controls because they're, they're getting in the way. But I have two terminals here. I, in one, I have my application going. So I typed npm start to start the application. In the other, I have opened Cypress. Uh, I'm not going to close it now and show how to open Cypress. I, I hope you already know that. If you don't, uh, it's it's pretty easy. It's just a simple command in in, uh, in terminal. But yeah, so I have these two things running. I have my VS code over here. And on the other screen, I actually have uh, Cypress running. It's already uh, running some tests. Uh, you can see some of our, some are failing. But let's let's take it one test at a time. Uh, so I'm going to filter out the first one uh, with this dot only function so that we focus just on this single one. So as soon as I save that, Cypress is automatically going to rerun that test. It's actually 
then faster than I was able to switch to another screen. And you can see that there's pretty much uh, nothing happening in here. We see that no commands were issued during this test. Uh, we see the default blank page where usually our UI uh, would be if we were doing an end-to-end -end, end -end, uh, UI test. Uh, so let's now test some API. Let's actually trigger some API. So the first thing I'm going to do is to use classical thing with uh, with Cypress and that's calling a, a, a Cypress command. So in Cypress, if you want to trigger an HTTP request, you can do so with CY request. Uh, this function will take a bunch of arguments or you can uh, provide it with a single one. I like to th keep uh, things tidy. So I pass an object and in here, I will basically tell uh, Cypress what it, uh, what it needs to do. So in my request, I want to choose the method. I want to choose the URL. And in some cases, I want to, uh, want to choose some other stuff like headers or queries or stuff like that. So let's, let's start simple. Let's do a, a method of a post. We're going to be sending a post request to a URL of uh, API boards. So uh, this application that I will be testing today is sort of a to-do app, but it's more of a, uh, it's sort of a, if you're familiar with uh, the product called Trello, it's, it's basically a to-do app but with some additional capabilities. Like you can, or you can create multiple to-do lists and you can organize them to what are called boards. So you can have a board, multiple to-do lists in them. So that's what we are creating now. We are creating a new board. Uh, of course, if I'm creating something, uh, I need to pass some information to my database. I need to uh, provide uh, it with some data. Uh, or with some body. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that there's somebody which will be an object and uh, uh, let's give our board that we are going to be creating a name. So let's do that name and call it my new board. All right, so I will save my test. Cypress is immediately going to run it and you can see that my request is being ran uh, in, my, in my timeline. So here I have the command we had 201 uh, status code. We have been successful with, with triggering this request. So that's that's awesome. But uh, what do we do now? Like, where's the other information? Well, Cypress being the end-to-end uh, -end testing tool running inside browser will take advantage of the browser that it is running in. So what that means is when we click on the timeline on our request, you can actually see this pinned thing. So usually when you would test the UI, you would have a pinned snapshot of the uh, of the application here. Uh, but what we can do here is we can open the console and take a look at the detail of this uh, of this API call. So when I click on it, it's actually going to print out the information to my console. So in here, in the console, I can examine uh, different parts of my request. So I can see what I have been sending to the uh, to the request. So I'll see the request body. I'll see the attributes, name, my board. Uh, I can see the uh, headers, URL, basically all of the information about the about the request. So response headers. It's all it's all here. Now I can see that I have some response body in here. So I have sent the name of the board I want to create my new board to the server. And server has responded with some information, so it will generate the date uh, of where uh, of when this board was created. It will generate an ID. It will give me back my name, and we have some additional attributes like start was false, user was zero, and uh, all of this we can actually test. We can also test our response uh, stay, status. Now the way we can access all of these properties is by taking a look at this yielded parameter. So Cypress has this chaining syntax where every command will pass on information onto, onto the next one. So when we want to take a look into what our request command is passing, we can take a look at this yielded parameter. So you can see this is an object that has a body uh, attribute, which is also an object. Uh, we can see the duration, we can see the headers, 
and we can see the status. So the way we, were, we are going to test this, and actually we have multiple ways. If we want to keep things very simple, we can just, uh, so for example, we only want to check the status, we can choose this super easy, uh, super uh, simple uh, syntax. So I'll go uh, with the command that's called its, and this is basically for accessing the properties of the, uh, of the yield its parameter. So for example, I can go its status, and this status will be, can be tested with a shoot command. So uh, shoot equal 201. So when I save my test now and run it, I see my assertion here. So I'm checking, I'm triggering the request and I'm just checking the status, whether it actually has the 201 uh, status, which it should have. Uh, but if I want to test something more uh, complicated, then I can use a then function. So this then function will take a callback as a parameter and the argument of this function is will be whatever was yielded by the previous command. So we can give it an alias, for example, uh, like board, that makes sense. And inside this function, we will write our chai assertion. So chai comes in bundled with uh, Cypress, as many of you probably know. Uh, and, that, uh, and now we can write our uh, test like this. So for example, we can expect the board status uh, are we going to hit that? Yeah, okay. Status to equal uh, 201, right? So we did the, basically the same thing as we did before, but with this try uh, function, right? So we can take a look at some other attributes. For example, uh, we can take a look at the board uh, body, right? So let's take a look inside the body and let's test one of those uh, attributes that were in there. So let me go back and take a look in the console, I'll click on the request command, see what it is actually returning. Take a look at the yielded parameter and we see the body. So let's let's take an, uh, uh, an attribute from in here. For example, this start attribute is false. This should always be false when we create our new board uh, by default. So we can we can test that. So let's do body uh, uh, body start attribute and we want it to be false all right so now i'll save my test run it again and i'm testing multiple attributes now so that's uh, that's nice um what about things we cannot really pre pretend right so for example this id that's going to change every time we create a new board right so uh it's going to be changing uh, uh basically based on how many uh, how many boards we have in our database. So let's let's maybe just assert that this will return a number. So this way we can go ahead and do expect uh, board uh, body uh, ID. And we want it to be a number, right? So let's say, oops, I'll save my test, run it. And voila, we are testing three different parts of our uh, of our API response, and uh, and that's it. All right. So yeah, so this is a very simple way of how we can how we can test our API. Uh, let's go to the next example because Cypress has this great advantage, and that is that it is actually very pluggable. It is an open source software. And it allows you to write your own plugins. It allows you to expand uh, Cypress functionality. And that's where, that's exactly what, uh, what we can do here. So as you can see, when I trigger this command, a CY request, we are going to pass in the board name. So instead of passing the name directly, I have just added that to a constant. Pretty much the same we did with the previous example, but this going into uh, into console might get a little bit annoying over time. So we have this whole white space over here, which we are not using. So instead of not using that, we can use that. So I have created a plugin uh, for Cypress, which is called Cypress Plugin API. Let's actually uh, open that. 
So it's uh, available for you on GitHub and on NPM. And what it will do is it will make uh, use of that uh, of that white space, which uh, usually is empty. So uh, the installation of the plugin is pretty simple. You just do npm install Cypress plugin API, and then you import that into your e2e.js. So since I've already done that, uh, I don't need to uh, I don't need to add anything. So you can see e2e. That JS Cypress plugin is already here. Uh, and what this plugin will do for you is it will add a new command. And this command is called API. So you go CY API and you can use it exactly as you would use your, uh, your request. But in addition to triggering that request, it's going to give you this uh, neat little uh, UI. So you can actually see what the uh, method was, what the URL was, you can see what you have been sending towards uh, the server, and of course all of the status, duration, and even size, which is normally not available in CY requests. In here you can examine the whole response, you can take a look at the headers, and if there were some cookies set, you would see them here as well. In addition to that, it has some nice colors, so you can see on the timeline what was the request, what was the method, uh, etc. So that's just one of the plugins you can use when you are uh, testing API. But uh, of course, when you are testing API, this is a good thing. This can help you examine what's happening. But uh, the, the real core of API testing is actually taking a look at the response, taking a look at what we have actually uh, returned, what we uh, have uh, gotten from server. Now, with the, with the simple uh, then and then writing some uh, some functions, uh, we can go pretty far, but there is a better way. Uh, so for example, if we have a complicated object and we just want to uh, test some parts of that, the code can get pretty complicated pretty fast. Uh, so what you can do is use this amazing plugin uh, called CY Spock. Now, CY Spock uh, is a plugin which you can import right into your test file. So I'm going to do that. So let's do import uh, Spock from uh, CY Spock. And the way you will use that, you will pass a Spock function right into your then. So let's do Spock. And Spock function is here. And you pass an object into that. So. Spock will take a look at what the previous command has returned. Again, it's the same yielded parameter which we are using all the time in, uh, in Cypress. Uh, but instead of writing your expect function, you can just pass an object where all of the things that you want to test will be defined. So for example, if you want to check the, uh, the status, then you would write status 201. If you want to check the body, we'll pass in the body and say let's let's just type uh, let's just uh, test some of the things uh, that we have already tried. So for example, the name that should be the board name, right? So what we sent is what we should get back. So let's let's do the board name, and when I save my test, I've actually combined two plugins together, so I have my UI over here, and I have my assertions written like this. The really cool thing about this is that you can define, uh, so of course the body that returns from the server has those additional parameters. It has that ID, it has that start parameter, it has some additional information as well, but we don't need to uh, define the whole thing, just the things we are interested in. Uh, and that's uh, that's pretty sweet. Now, another thing we can do uh, when we are talking about testing APIs is using JSON schemas. Now, JSON schemas are really, uh, really useful to sort of validate whether the response that's coming from the server actually has all of the information we need. Uh, so we're not, ex um, not interested in what the information actually is, just want to make sure that we actually get the proper uh, format of our uh, of the information. Now, JSON schemas are something that's not supported in Cypress out of the box, but 
as you may know, Cypress comes in uh, with some tools bundled inside. So we have jQuery, we have Lodash, and the assertion library that we are using in Cypress is called Chai. Now, Chai is an amazing assertion library, and you can actually expand uh, that library. So that's what I'm actually doing. So I have installed a Chai JSON schema uh, plugin, which is a Chai plugin. And then I have imported that plugin in my E2E file. So I'm actually using it uh, by using this Chai use and requiring the Chai JSON schema plugin. What this will do for me now is that I can take a look at the response of this get request. So I'm getting a board from my database. I'm adding some headers as well. And I want to take a look at the response body because we're not interested in status or headers or whatever. And in this body, I want to make sure that it is uh, uh, compliant to a JSON schema. So uh, the JSON schema I'm actually actually have saved in my fixtures files. So you can see the schema looks like this. It has a uh, it has a title, basically just a, just a name. And there we have some properties which are required. So we say uh, it the the response body should have a name. It should have a user start created an ID. And then those properties have certain uh, types. So we want the name to be a string. We want the user to be a number. Start should be a boolean, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now what we can do now uh, is in our tests import this json schema so let's let's do that so let's do import uh ooh, what did i do oh nothing actually okay <laughs> import import board uh schema from and i'll just reference the fixtures file board schema json and use that board schema now in my assertion so i'll go to shoot json schema board schema it's not that readable but uh, it does the job. So when I save my test now, you can see that the response body actually matches the JSON schema. Now, if we were to change that, if we go back to board schema and say that the name will actually be a number, which is, of course, it's not, save my test. Now we are actually getting an error. So, uh, uh, so yeah, this is, this is pretty useful. By the way, this JSON schema is something that you can easily just generate. There are many sites, I think I had a link somewhere uh, that can sort of just, you, you put a JSON uh, you know, response to them and they will just generate that JSON file for you, uh, sort of reading, taking a look into what, uh, what your uh, response body is and they generate the schema for you, which you can then use as sort of a, uh, a validator. So yeah, so that's pretty sweet. So I'll save my test. So we have it nice and green and uh, let's go back to our test so there's another way of how we can take a look in in our api so so far we have been uh, calling that directly right we we were the ones actually making the assertions uh, making the api calls and uh, but of course we can also take a look into uh, into what our application is doing so in this test uh, I'm using command, uh, one of my favorite commands, if not the favorite, uh, and that's called CY intercept. So let me show you what that does. So now in my test, we are actually opening the application. So this is our Trello app. And as we interact with our application, the application is doing some API calls to our database, right? So for example, when we open the home page here and it's loading data it's actually calling an api boards uh, uh it's actually calling for the list of all of the boards from our database uh when it comes back it will actually render them so when we go ahead and create a new board that will also trigger a api call so we have this post api boards call which we were previously doing manually using cy request or cy api but now it's the application it's the front end doing that uh doing that work so what we can do actually instead of isolating our api tests and calling them ourselves 
we can use intercept to match a request that the application is doing and wait for that and then test it. So when I wait for that request to happen and validate that the that the request is actually happening as we are interacting with our app, again, we have this yielded parameter, which we can take a look into. So now we can also see the request itself and we can validate whether the request is actually being done properly. Uh, whether our front end is triggering the right URL, whether it is not modifying the, the name in any way. But of course, since we are talking about API testing, we can check out the response. So we'll see, uh, we'll see the body, which is the same as we did, uh, as we had before. Uh, we can see the status code. So that's something we can, we can also test. Uh, basically everything we see here, it's testable. The way I did that, oops, sorry. <laughs> the way I did that was to take a look, uh, uh, was to first match our API call. So that's the post API boards. So just, just a note here. So intercept is different from request, right? It, when we are using request, it's us. It's sort of like postman, right? We are the ones calling the APIs. With intercept, we're just watching. We're just observing what our application is doing. So we visit it and we go ahead and create a new board. We do some interaction and that request happens because of the application. So intercept is watching for that request to happen. So when it happens, we can wait for that using CY wait, and then we can write a test. So in my test, I can go then and do a board and write a classic uh, try assertion. So let's do expect, and we want to board, I don't know, response status code to equal uh, 201, right? So let's save that, see the interaction happen. And as the interaction happens, we can make sure that the API call is actually being done uh, properly, which is sweet. Uh, also, as I mentioned, if we take a look at what we can actually test, Let's do board. Uh, we have all of these different um, parts of our uh, of our request, so we can actually take a look at the request, right? So let's take a look at the request body and take a look at the name. So in here we are tapping board and hitting enter. If you have been testing uh, uh, front ends for a while, you might have seen an error that will do something like uh, when you type in your input and hit enter will be actually which is something you don't want so this is something you can actually validate by by making sure that the request not the response but the request we are sending is actually uh formatted properly so what we will be doing here is that we're going to expect that the port request body name property uh, is equal to this new board. Now, obviously this should be a, a variable, but I'm just uh, doing it manually. All right, when I save that, I will make sure that the, uh, that the uh, status code is proper and also that we're sending the proper information. Now this blinking is, uh, is a funny thing. So we can actually take a look in our application, how it looks when we do the request and also how uh, how the application looked after we got the response. So this is this is what you see over here. That's the request and response uh, stays. So that's why it's blinking. Sorry about that. Uh, let's now let's now take it uh, up a notch. So I'm matching my request over here, but it's not only not not the only thing I can do with intercept. So I can take a look at something else. So in here. I'm matching my request once again, right? So I'm visiting uh, my uh, my page. Wait, I mean, this blinking should not be happening just like that by its own. Okay, now it's better. Um, all right, so in my next test over here, I'm intercepting the, uh, you are, uh, the, the request that has the method of get and URL of API boards. And by the way, there are so many different ways of how you can match. You can match uh, the request uh, according to query, according to headers. Uh, I mean, there are endless ways of how you can 
find the request you, you actually want. So this intercept, uh, this object that I'm passing on to the intercept function is actually uh, a way of uh, telling Cypress, hey, watch for a request that has these properties. Now, in addition to matching any request we want, we can actually pass another object and this will define how we want to uh, how we want to handle uh, that uh, that request. So, for example, I can say that instead of the real body, I will get an empty array. Normally, when we call uh, when we open our application and our application calls this get API boards, it would get back an array. We get an array of 14 objects. So if I actually unwrap this, you will see all of the boards from our database showing up. So we got 14 boards. They have very similar names because I've been testing those. Uh, and what we can do in our in our code, say, uh, we is that we will change uh, the body. So see what happens now when I save this. I save it, and my application behaves as if there were no boards in my database. But of course, they are still there. Essentially, what I'm doing is that I'm catching the request that's responsible for feeding this view with all the data, and I'm cutting it off. So I cut off the real response, and I provide my own. So it's not in any way meddling with the real data. It's just testing how the front end behaves when it gets this kind of data. So this can be pretty useful, for example, if you want to test your onboarding flow or something that has some particular data. So we can provide the, the body like this explicitly, or we can just define it. So for example, let's say name, go hello world. Let's give it a ID of, I don't know, something like this. Start attribute will be false. And I don't know, maybe we don't even need to uh, add anything else. And here we go. Here we have our hello world uh, board that I have just created. Of course, it's not real. It's just a fake one, because if I click on it, I will get a 404. That kind of board with this ridiculous ID doesn't exist, right? So I'm working with uh, fake that data. I'm mocking it. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Someone is uh, actually laughing in our. <laughs> that, was, that was a nice interruption. <laughs> uh, all right, and by the way, uh, Sev, if we have any questions, feel free, feel free to jump in. No, uh, I'm good. Thank you. All right, not so far. Uh, good. I still hear some laughing in the background. Uh, but uh, well, I'm okay with that. I I have kids. I know how <laughs> how that goes. Uh, oh, also one thing I wanted to show you. Uh, I actually don't have fixtures, but instead of instead of uh, providing the data on your own, instead of doing the thing, uh, writing the the data like this, you can pass another parameter which will be called fixture, and this way you can reference a fixture uh, fixture file in the fixtures folder. So let's say I have some boards.json. Let me actually go ahead and create that boards.json. And I'll put some data in here. So let's do name. Uh, that actually is to be name uh, and do hello world. Let's do uh, ID of ridiculous number, then do start of uh, true for, for a change. And when I save this and I save my test as well, ooh, uh, save, then I have my hello world in here. If I decide to change that to goodbye, do you actually believe me that this happened? Um, then it will say goodbye world. So we can actually uh, have static files in our, uh, in our fixtures folder and use them to mock our data. Now, this is really useful, again, to see how your application is behaving uh, based on different kinds of data. So, for example, if we have no data, or even in the cases when we have 
very much data, right? Does the application render that properly? Uh, what does it do when it gets corrupted data? How does it behave if we have uh, uh, if we have this and that? I mean, there are so many options of how you can uh, how you can work with this. All right, so let's uh, let's now go to the to another use case because these are uh, one of my favorites. Now, intercepting the APIs of our of our application. Hello? Oh yeah, go ahead. We have our first uh, question, and I think it's relevant to what you're doing right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jakub let's... asks um, uh, if you can partially override the body. Oh yeah. Yes. Exactly. You can. Uh, you can totally do that. I can. I can show you because um, besides uh, besides doing it like this, besides passing an object, you can actually pass a function. And I'm going to get to that in in the very last example. And I'll keep this in mind because I have some other example, but uh, I'll show you how to how to partially overwrite the the body as well. Uh, so let me continue, and I'll if I forget by by any chance, uh, please remind me. Um, but yeah, intercept can can get us to a different kinds of edge cases. So for example, in here I'm uh, going to change the response status so i have this flow where we're going to create a new board basically we're doing uh, the the same thing over and over, over again now when i type in new board and i hit the enter key then it's of course going to do its thing right but what if we get to a uh, to a bump right what if our server is not working does the user actually get information about that uh, well, it's important that they do, but how do we how do we test that use case? Do we actually drop our server and turn it off and see how the front end behaves? We don't have to do that. With uh, with the intercept, we can actually in the second object we can do uh, status code and change the status code to, for example, five hundred. Now, when I save the test and run it. I can actually see how my application behaves when I uh, when I uh, uh, when I get a 500 error from the server. Let me actually do one thing. I'll I'll delete all of the all of the boards. Uh, can I delete all of the boards? What's going on? Uh, oh, here I have this nice tools in here that can help me do that. Um, and I'll. Uh, I'll turn this off for a moment because I want to show you one thing. Hello. Okay. Let's run my test again. Now it's working. And put this status code back. So I'll save it to get my error. Now, uh, I will get this error message. So there was an error creating board. But of course, it disappears. It shows just for a, for a brief second. Now, in order to test this uh, edge case, I want to make sure that that message all of, uh, appears. Now with Cypress having this timeline, we can actually get to the exact state when our uh, error appeared. So after we typed in new board and hit enter, that's when the error happened. So now we can actually go ahead and select our element, which would normally be very hard to find because it appears and then it's just disappears from the DOM. But with those snapshots, we can get easily to that. So I'm going to uh, get that. So I already did. It has the data CY notification message. So I'm using my custom attributes. And I can just go ahead and copy that to clipboard and paste it into my test. So I'll paste it in and I make sure that this message is uh, actually visible. So let's do visible that should be visible all right so now i save my test the error happens and the message should appear as it does so that's great uh and now i have tested what would normally be a very hard to reach edge case now speaking of edge cases uh, as i mentioned and as the question uh greatly pointed out thank you for that question by the way uh you can actually uh change things dynamically so Again, this first object in the intercept command is used to uh, to find like what we want to match, what we want to focus on. Uh, and the second object 
can uh, can actually be a function. So we can uh, what we can do is we can we can match things dynamically and we can handle things dynamically. So if this second thing is a function, we can match the whole request and then we can access different properties of the request. So we're taking uh, we're talking about the whole request. So not only the response, but also the request. So for example, I can take a look at the request body and I can dynamically actually change it uh, as it is leaving our uh, leaving our application. Uh, but let's not do that. Let's focus on the on the reply. And in here, I can match a uh, I can again pass a function. So we got a function inside a function. Hope you're still with me. And we can say that the response delay should be, I don't know, eight seconds. So when we do that and I save my test, I'll see that the data is still loading. Oh, actually, sorry. Let me hide this for a, for a moment. Uh, right, so our data is loading, loading, loading. It takes too long. And there's this message. This is taking too long. Do you want to reload? And this is something that's happening quite often in, uh, in uh, modern uh, web applications that we actually give user to the option to reload the application if there are some interruptions or some, some other problems. So what we can do now, as we have delayed our, our response, we can check whether not only whether this message appears, but also whether we can, uh, whether the reload bu button will actually reload our application. So in here, I have kind of already uh, done that. So I will find a, uh, a element that has the text reload using contains command, and I will just go ahead and click on it. Now, when I save my test now, it's going to find that as soon as it appears, we're going to click on it. But now we have a slight problem. If our data is still taking a while to load, and now if we were to, I don't know, like find the uh, find the element in here, then we might get into into a problem. So let's uh, uh, let's take a look. Let's let's write that test. I'm going to do cy get uh, and find the data cy board item, which is the which is the board item single item in here, uh, and I want to make sure that the element is. Uh, visible, right? That it actually appears. Now this test will fail because as soon as the message appears, we click on it, but then we are still having our uh, request delayed because it actually happens twice in our test, not only the single time uh, at the beginning. So now our test fails, but our boards will eventually load. So what do we do? Uh, I mean, we could put a timeout here and wait for that, I don't know, let's do nine seconds just to be sure. But we could do that, That's, that actually works. But now we have quite a long test to test something that actually doesn't take, um, doesn't need to take that long. Uh, we have like 12 seconds over here. That's, that's no good, we can do better. Uh, instead of that, what we can do is we can specify how many times we want to match a certain request. So in that case, we can do times and then say, just match it once. And then the second time it happens, just leave it alone. We're not going to be using that. So let's save that. And as I click on the reload, after that, my boards will load instantly because my second uh, API call is not uh, matched. And my test now takes just those four seconds uh, that, it, that it normally takes. Now, since Quick we question. have, oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, Aurelien, do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, yeah, I have one question. Looking by looking at the URL uh, from the example, it seems like a absolute URL. So my question is, can we intercept whatever requests we want, or could we have issues if we have um, an application which is calling um, APIs out of our domain? Like, if could yeah. we have course issue? I don't know how Cypress is working under the hood. So question is, can we yeah, accept yeah. whatever request? That that's a great question. Yeah. So uh, so I have a relative URL. So I actually have a base URL set uh, set in here. So it means that I'm matching a URL. The the full URL will be localhost three thousand and then API ports. So if your application is doing uh, calls to the third party server 
and it doesn't actually get those cores issue there's no reason why uh why the test in cypress would uh, would have issues with that so yeah you can actually match uh, any kind of api request that your application is doing in, in that case you would type in the full url and you could still use both right you can have one intercept to intercept the the, the local url and another intercept that matches the uh, matches the uh, api call to the third party um also, there is a there is a way you can use this intercept actually for uh, for static resources. So if you have like an image that's being loaded or a CSS file that's being loaded or something else, SVG icon, whatever, you can match it with uh, with intercept. And again, you can manipulate that in uh, in any way you want. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully that answer your question. I, I just remember that I promised to to make sure that I uh, that I will answer the, you know, the the question from before whether we can just uh, change a part of our response. So so let's let's take a look at that. I'm going to remove this delay, uh, remove this test, and when we when we run it we have a simple uh, uh, we get back the response. It's an array of objects. We get two objects and let's say we want to modify just a part of our response and say that the first object will not be hello but it will be i don't know hello world so we have the response over here so what we can do we can take a look at the response body and again that response body will be an array of objects so let's reference the first one and reference its name so I'm going to change that to hello world. And I think that should be enough to change that. Yeah. Okay. So now it's, uh, now it's hello world. So I changed just the part and everything stays. So if I actually click on this, it will open the board. Uh, and now you can see that it actually has the original text. It has the, has the text hello, because in here, when I'm opening the detail, we're getting into the detail of the application now. But when we open the detail, there's actually another API call being called. So it's API board slash one. And we didn't intercept that one. So if we wanted those two to match, we would we would need to match this one as well and change the uh, change that as well. But uh, to shortly answer your question, yes, you can you can change just a part of that. And I have found it to be incredibly useful for things like when you have a SaaS uh, application. And you would usually have a subscription that can actually get to a uh, to a state when it's like expiring so you know those messages like your subscription will expire in seven days do you want to uh, resubscribe or whatever now if you want to test a case like that where that message appears uh, again if you want if you're using the, the 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 raw data you need to create that subscription. You need to change its date. Maybe you cannot change it in the past or whatever. Uh, so instead of doing that, you can create uh, that subscription and then open your front end and just change the response when it's when your application actually fetches the subscription. Uh, you can change the date and see if that message actually appears when uh, when it's when it's expiring or depending on how your API is built or the front end is built and, and the condition on when that message appears, uh, then, then you do that. But uh, uh, the network layer in, in, in Cypress can be like, you can meddle with, uh, with almost anything. So, uh, uh, so yeah, that's, that's how you do that. All uh, right. Since we are I'm already in the, at the end of our presentation, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, then go ahead because we have yeah, another I, question. I just, but then... I just wanted to wrap up. I mean, we can then we wrap up the and then Q and A because I I have yep. reached the end, so I'll stop uh, sharing my screen <laughs> and we can have a face to face conversation now. All right, um, I will allow people to unmute themselves. So if you have any questions, feel free to just unmute and ask yourself. If you do not have a microphone, just write the question. I will paraphrase and read it. I think we have a question from probably Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my question would be, in case I'm trying to test a project doing a migration from an old service to a new service, uh, is it possible with Cypress to compare the requests and the response from two different endpoints 
I mean, for example, I'm migrating for, from Oracle database to Postgres, mm -hmm. and I would like just to check that the service that was using Oracle and the service that is using Postgres, they are returning the same data. This would be the success of my test. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would take some manual work. Uh, most of the code you would need to write your, yourself, like, uh, there's no like a method, like make this match that or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but yeah, it, it could be done. The, the way I imagine that, like you would have one CY request to trigger the the, the first database, and then you will, uh, and then you would actually you can actually use then function, and inside that you will use the second request, and and make sure that uh, that the response actually matches the uh, the thing in the first uh, first request so yeah it it can be done okay thank um, you I, I don't know if it's okay if i add but i would not recommend doing something like that because that means you're relying on something that you are not really certain of so mm -hmm. let's say you have some other reason why this endpoint is not available anymore and it's mm -hmm. gonna get the response and it's a 403 let's say and then you do your migration and uh, you run it again and the permission is still blocked because of some, let's say, AWS changes or something like that. And you get a perfectly running test that says, yes, it's the same response. It's it's mm -hmm. still a, a four of three, right? Uh, oh. Of course, in this case, you, you have some you have some um, validation of states. So this would probably still fail yeah. in the end. Yeah. But you know what I mean, right? You, you're yeah. building on a, a fragile foundation. Yeah, By yeah. the way, I will I will also add to that. Like it, it's good, to, uh, a very good thing that Sam pointed out. You, uh, in other words, you need to make sure that the source of truth is actually true, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but also, uh, what I haven't really shown, uh, probably should have, is that by default, Cypress, when you when you use CY request and it gives you a non two hundred or three hundred uh, status code, it will make the whole test fail. You can you can change that uh, behavior. For example, if you want to change negative status codes, you can do that. But by default, uh, if you get a 403 or 500, that will make the test fail. So in that particular use case, you would be safe. Mm -hmm. But again, yeah, check the source of truth. That's that's mm -hmm. an important. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Great question. Yeah, thank you. Any for the other break. question? If there are no other questions, I have another one. Um, um, I, I remember um, when I was working with Cypress, it was pretty finicky to create custom commands that are good with like chaining and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something um, that is different with API tests or uh, are there any recommendations when working with custom commands and API tests? I would have to like look into what mm -hmm. you mean, because uh, I generally find the the custom commands uh, pretty easy to use, <laughs> and I, I have like very good experience with uh, with sort of creating your own custom library on uh, on things. Uh, of course, yeah, there there is the thing of like chaining syntax, so that's uh, that's something you. Uh, depending on where you, where you come from, might not feel very like at home. Um, me being in tech sort of for quite a short time, and most of the time I was using Cypress, I'm I feel at home with this with this syntax. But um, in, in general, what you need to do, you need to make sure that when you create your your Cypress command chain, that anything you create during the test will actually be part of that chain. So you can e either use the then command or whatever. If you don't do that, uh, you might get into unexpected results, but there's an option that you can uh, you can um, you can choose and that's uh, using aliases. So aliases they sort of act like like variables, although they are not like not the same thing as when you do const or var or let in in, in JavaScript. But those aliases can help you get whatever you need into the command chain. And uh, if you are using custom commands, you can actually play with that where the where the alias will be either like part of argument or it will be something that's returned from from that custom command. And you can end up with very clean code like you can avoid the callback hell uh, quite easily uh, mm -hmm. with with those aliases. So I, I would I would Again, I would take, need to take a look into that, 
But my my number one tip would be take a look into aliases and how you can pass the data around. And as a result, your your code might be very readable, very very clean. Okay, thank you. We have another question from Chaitali. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask? Yeah, sure. So I actually have a um, scenario where I want my test to continue when the uh, response code is 400, mm -hmm. but there is a certain custom uh, message, mm -hmm. for example, invalid something, something. But in other 400 scenarios, I want the uh, test to fail. So I know Cypress considers a test to pass when the response is 200, right? So I have put the fail on status code as false. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it does not really, yeah, consider the 200 thing. But yeah. I also want my test to fail when it is 400, but to pass when 400 plus my custom message. And I'm not really able to handle this. So yeah, can you please advise something? Yeah. I, I think if I can share my screen for a second again. Um, so let's go back to, to one of the first uh, tests now, uh, request assertion. And what you can do when you are using this then uh, command, you can say, you can pass another argument and that will become your error message. So uh, for example, checking status code, something like this. And if it, if it fails, right, it's not exactly the use case, but you get, get the point, right? If it, if it fails, then, oops, I forgot to do it only. Just to only let's skip this one then you will get the get the message you can see that checking status code expected to a one whatever that's one of uh, one of the option another one that comes to mind is if you have a test that you want to, to have a custom error right so let's say this is this is a single it single function single test you can do c y on and then there's this uh, fail and you can just do something with the with the failure so i have actually written a plugin that uh it's called cypress steps so it will add a step annotation into your tests and whenever that test fails it will just write out all of the steps that the test was trying to do and where it actually stopped so i'm using this api and you can say that all right so when we have a error message add something to that my custom message right so now when i save my test uh oh actually i forgot to return the error so let's do return error is that uh, wait return error i, I kind of forgot now like what what was the uh error da, da, da new error i think it was something like this i don't know uh, probably not i i will need to get back to you on that because i i now forgot but th this was sort of a, another option so there's this fail event that happens whenever a cypress test fails and when that happens you can actually like expand the message with something of, of your own but i just forgot like what you are should what you should be uh, returning, I cannot get to seem, uh, don't seem to get that right. So sorry about that. But uh, the, the general idea goes something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Hopefully that helped. <laughs> hey, can you please um, share the uh, name of the plugin, please? Uh, the, the steps plugin that I mentioned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah let's, do, let's do that. Cypress plugin steps so you can find it on my github it's on npm it's uh it's everywhere also cypress plugin api is the one that i have used and of course let me share the 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 the, the repository that i have worked on uh just give me a second here we go there you go oh yeah, thank you for sharing that and the link to the plugin. Okay. Um, since we are on the topic, uh, Jakob asked um, 
uh, it, he said a little off topic, but um, how do you write a Cypress plugin? Uh, well, Might be its own talk, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh, uh, it's actually not that hard. I actually found the like the writing of the plugin is it's pretty pretty easy. It's just like standard JavaScript. What I think what I found a little bit harder was like dealing with the whole npm registering to the library and and, and stuff like that. But the the way I did that, I I googled the tutorial for that and and it was uh, and it was really good you you should definitely check out Gleb Bahmuto he's he has a uh, he has his own blog and he has actually written a very nice uh, article about how to publish a cypress plugin uh so i got inspired by that i didn't use the the approach one to one uh, but in general i got uh, most of the ideas I, I got uh, when when creating that plugin. I got from him, so that's uh, uh, that was really useful. I, I recommend checking out that. Yeah, he's a great teacher, and um, oh, if yeah. anyone knows how to write those plugins, uh, I don't know. He probably has over a hundred or something. I don't know, uh, but yeah, a, a ton. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he has his own <laughs> workshop just on the plugins yeah. he wrote. So that yeah. that tells you a lot. And I believe he he wrote like half of the plugins there are overall in in world so, uh, so yeah he, he um, goat. penny asked who is gleb oh, yeah glebbamuto.com that's where you find him and yeah if you are into cypress uh, and you don't know gleb you should run and and uh, get familiar with him he's he's yeah. the best like he has so, so much more knowledge around cypress than me uh, so yeah yeah highly recommended also interesting youtube channel from him Oh yeah, stuff, yeah. Huh? he created like a whole library of of probably like every problem uh, there is <laughs> for Cypress and how to solve that. Uh, so so yeah, and make sure make sure to follow him. Okay, I think we do not have any other questions. Last chance, if you have something, feel free. Um, we're very well in time. Um, there any last questions unmute yourself now or See. be silent forever yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah there was another uh, recommendation for his cypress channel um highly recommended yeah. okay philip thank you very much oh. thank you very much for having me well, no no no, no one last we have one last oh. from from Daniel. Do you want to unmute yourself, or should I just say it? Okay. Hi. Um, um, so, so my question would be: uh, We have a system which uses WebSockets, um, mm -hmm. which isn't a PostGet type API, but is yeah. somewhat similar. Um, is it possible to test that? Uh, and how much more complicated is? It? Yeah. So there's no way of. Of testing uh, WebSockets in uh, in Cypress, at least not with the with the commands that I have shown. Uh, so I have dealt with WebSockets uh, in the past because uh, they were like very important functionality of the application that I was testing. What I ended up doing is that I would uh, uh, I would do UI test for that. I would basically test the result of that WebSocket. If that if that WebSocket message that would I don't know arrive would not have a, a, a UI visible result, but I just want to check whether it actually came back. Uh, then uh, my, my second best uh, chance was to look into the internal store of the application. So every like modern frame, uh, mo modern web application nowadays has uh, some sort of internal store. It can be like Redux or uh, RxJS or whatever, like this, this uh, state management uh, uh, solutions. So since Cypress is running inside the browser and you have the application code right there, you can actually access internals of that, uh, of that store and, and see uh, whether they are in the, in the correct state. And since Cypress has retryability built in most uh, of almost all of the all of the um, uh, commands, what I ended up doing is to take a look into the store 
and then making that assertion and it will retry and it would pass if eventually within a certain time limit the store would get into the state that I was expecting. So yeah, to, to like shorten the answer, you cannot test a WebSocket directly, but you can choose a different strategy to basically test the result of the WebSocket uh, activity. So, uh, uh, so yeah, that's right. Thank you. Right. Thank. No problem. Right. Thanks, everyone, and especially Philip. Let's hand it back to Aurelian. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. This was fun, and uh, yeah, see you on. Uh, social networks. Bye, everyone. Thanks a lot. Right. Last word to first of all, thank you, Philip, for the super nice uh, presentation. Oh, but I get my hair. Just to remember that uh, next uh, event, uh, the twenty first of June, we will uh, host Joshua Grant, uh, which uh, will talk about first testing. So don't miss this uh, next uh, CTM event and uh, have a nice evening or a nice afternoon all and see you next time. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Great questions. Bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.